Since the beginning of Plan 9, there was a concept of network-based storage. This is also influenced by the folks at Bell Labs having access to a magneto optical jukebox. Uh, you could think of them like a machine that holds a bunch of blank CDs and could burn them as backups and then be instructed to retrieve, load, and read the disks written in the past. With this sort of equipment around, the original Plan 9 file server was designed to take a daily snapshot of any changed files on the server and back those up to the jukebox. This concept still lives on, just without the jukebox. And in 9Front in particular, this is with the file system format called CW64FS. The C stands for cache, which is the, uh, it's where you do your day-to-day -day accessing of files. Uh, the W is for worm, which means write once, read many, which is the backed up data. Uh, Legacy Plan 9 also does this, but uses the Venti and Fossil system. Uh, Ninefront also offers the HJFS, which blurs these lines a bit. It relies more on RAM for caching uh, and does, doesn't require like uh, separate partitions. Um, and I've mentioned it in earlier videos on setting up simple all-in-one basic Ninefront installs. I do recommend HJFS for its simplicities. Um, but if you want serious business file server for your grid, uh, CW64FS does offer the option of using separate disks for cache and worm. I'm back on one of the old Dell Optiplexes and I have two hard drives installed, a solid state, which I'll use for the cache drive and a platter drive, uh, which I'll use for the worm. And since the system will boot itself off the hard drives, I'll also need a nine fat partition and uh, you know to hold the boot files and the NVRAM partition uh, to hold any passwords. Um, so it can start without asking for passwords. Uh, CW64FS, um, there's also an option for an other partition. Uh, other will get bound to the temp directory and is the default for things like web cache files. Uh, it's also sensible to use it for downloads of big things like ISOs or thumb drive images um, that you don't want backed up to and eventually filling up your worm partition. So I want to divide the solid state drive into 9FAT, NVRAM, and cache, and the platter drive into worm and other. Um, now with the install script, um, it isn't really meant to do much beyond automating a basic install. So when it gets to prepping the hard drive, it might bug out if you backtrack and try to partition another disk. So I've already started here and chose CW64FS and uh, went ahead and blanked the stuff that was on these two drives already. Um, but if you've been watching my videos for the past year, you've probably progressed past the point of being a mere Plan 9 tourist and are ready to leave the script. Um, so I've already partitioned, or blanked all each drive, so now I'll go back and choose drive here. I'll go ahead and let it put plan nine on it. Now it's jumping to prep, but I can backtrack to part disk and then do the other one too. I'll both thing be plan nine. Oops, I think I did it wrong. Yep. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop that there now you know the um, um, install script is literally just a script so here it is under RC bin inst here's all the files and you can see that for prep disk when it gives the automatic options it's actually just running prep disk with these flags. And those will just automatically kind of guess how much space you need based on what the disk is. Um, things like NVRAM are always, and 9FAT are always a fixed size. But, um, so we can just go ahead and do that ourselves.
All right, so to write my own partition sizes, I'll do disk prep. And I'll do auto for the 9FAT, auto for NVRAM, and auto for FS oops, cache. And that'll be on drive zero on the plan nine partition. And here it is. So it's just gonna recommend 100 megabytes for the nine fat, you know, one little sector for NVRAM, and then the rest of it is going to be FS cache. So we'll write and quit. And then we can do the same for the second drive. So disk prep, do auto for the FS worm and auto for other. And that'll be on SDE1, that's capital E, on the plan nine. So here we go, I'll give 50 megabytes for the other and the rest of it will be dedicated to the worm partition. So now if we run the startup script again, it's gonna automatically find that we've set the, you know, it's seen that some of the tasks have been done. We've already picked our file system type, the CW64FS. We partitioned the disks and we just did the prep disk part too. So now we can mount it. It sees there's already the cache partition on SDE0. It sees that the worm is on the second hard drive. And it even sees that the other partition's over there too. And we can go ahead and do a ream, which is formatting and it'll also set up the Glenda user and stuff like that. But after this, it basically will just run like any other sort of um, install. You can watch my other videos on either doing a standalone, uh, you know, all in one terminal or a separate, you know, a um, file server with authorization and everything else set up too. So 9Front and Plan 9 are capable of a bunch more other uh, file system configuration. Um, you can check uh, FS in Section 3 of the manual. Um, this will explain doing like rudimentary um, mirroring and striping of hard drives. Uh, it's really low level, so um, it doesn't do any sort of data integrity checking. That has to be done by some other software. Um, another interesting option is the... ATA over Ethernet. Um, this was uh, developed by a private company called CoreAid, um, and they'd used uh, Plan 9 and some commercial storage area network equipment and uh, eventually kicked back some of the code. So that's also one of the options for doing uh, more interesting file system work. Um, anyway, um, as always, have fun.